Hello everybody and welcome to the Constable. Please subscribe now to get the latest news on archaeology, ancient history, civilizations and world mythology. Without further ado, let's get started. The Incas may have deliberately built Machu Picchu along fault lines. In this video, we present the reasons why this assertion is made. Fault lines would have provided the Incas with lots of pre-fractured rocks, perfect for building. The reason for choosing these extreme locations was threefold. Protection against earthquakes, a water supply, and readily available building materials. But all resulted from one factor, which is fault lines. The Inca citadel of Machu Picchu is one of the most stunning yet confounding pieces of architecture known to man. Lasting for 600 years high atop the Peruvian Andes. But why would 15th century builders erect such an elaborate city on a narrow mountain ridge and fault line 8,000 feet above sea level? It turns out though that forbidding conditions were not only advantageous but also may have helped the city remain intact for so long. According to new research presented by Roaldo Maniget from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil, the Incas were attracted to this confluence of fault lines for several reasons. Machu Picchu's location is not a coincidence, Maniget said in a statement. It would be impossible to build such a site in the high mountains if the subtract was not fractured. By building on these fractured zones between blocks of rocks in the earth's crust, the Incas would have had a built-in abundance of building materials in the form of pre-fractured stones. The fort might have also served as an efficient water source with rain and melted ice washing directly into the site without the risk of flooding of a city built in a valley. Published in the Geological Society of, of America journal and presented at its annual meeting in Phoenix, Manicate's research might finally explain how the Inca managed such a demanding construction project at such heights and how Machu Picchu has remained intact centuries later. These stones, as seen in Olantetambo, Peru, fit so perfectly together that the gaps in between are virtually non-existent. Manigets believe the Incas took advantage of these pre-existing fractures to fit compatible pieces together. Machu Picchu is comprised of more than 200 individual structures and was populated by 1,000 people at the height of the Inca Empire. A UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1983, the city's construction has confounded people since its modern discovery in 1911. It could not be built on a whim. It is part of a practice of building settlements on high rocky places, said Manigates. But what guide this practice? What knowledge of rocks and mountains did builders need to know to succeed in building cities under these conditions? By combining satellite imagery, field measurements from four expeditions between 2001 to 2012, and geoarchaeological analysis, Manigate's research shows the city was built atop fault lines of different lengths and sizes. Some are 110 miles long. The principal result was the discovery that Machu Picchu was built where geological faults intersect, Manigates explained. The underground confluence, marked by three main fault directions and two secondary fault directions that run north-south and east-west, nearly form an X-shape. Manigate found that Machu Picchu's main building and stairs were all oriented along the direction of this fault. He also noticed that other Inca settlements like Cuesco, Pisac, and Olantetambo were built atop fault line intersections as well. Transporting rocks in other ways wouldn't have been necessary for this site. Where faults intersect, rocks are even more fractured, he said. 
Therefore, there are places that have more loose blocks on the surface and also places where the rocks can be easily removed to build terraces and buildings. Manigate said it will be impossible to build at such height without rocks already fractured and that the Incas didn't even need to use mortar for these perfectly compatible stones to fit together. According to National Geographic, these stones dance and fall into their intended places when earthquakes occur. Thus, they have managed to keep the buildings from collapse for centuries. While Manigat isn't certain whether or not the Incas understood what tectonic fault lines were, he believes they knew this fracture site when they saw them. There is even a Quechua word for fault lines, which is Quichua. The Incas knew how to recognize intensely fractured zones and knew that they extended over long stretches, Manigat explained. This is for one simple reason. Faults and aquifers are part of water circles in Andean river. And they could use whatever water and resources they could get high atop the Andes. The Andean world is inhospitable, according to Manigates. Here, human life is possible only in a few places where water drips through fractures. Their cities and plantations were not large, but the little that was produced in one place made possible exchanges with other places, resulting in great diversity 